Stock Play of the Day is an educational program. Any statements made by Ally Invest employees are not intended to be or should be considered investment advice, a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security, or a recommendation to adopt an investment strategy. Hello and welcome to the Stock Play of the Day. Today's stock is the USL. That is an ETF that tracks oil prices. We'll discuss, should we pass or should we play? Hello, I'm Brian Overby, Senior Options Analyst with Ally Invest. And I'm Callie Cox, Senior Investment Strategist at Ally Invest. All right, Callie, before I pass it to you, I have some exciting news for all the watchers out there. Uh, at the end of the month, we're actually going to be doing a rookies course on the basics of options. We're going to talk about uh, the vernacular behind, behind option trading. We're going to talk about the marketplace and everything that's involved. And then we're going to get into the option strategy. So it's going to be a three uh, three-part series, and it's going to be free for all that wants to join. So if you'd like to learn more, please go to ally.com slash options for rookies. It's going to be put in the chat box right now. All right. With that said, let's get to the S&P 500 index. I'm showing a chart of it. Uh, fairly boring. Not too much going on in the S&P. Uh, we have all the ducks in a row. Once again, we have the 200-day moving average below the 50-day below the 20 day, that's usually a good sign of a healthy marketplace. Looks like the 20 day is trying to do a little bit of work here. Uh, ever since the breakout that we had back here, it looks like uh, at the beginning of October, a lot of green bars in the S&P 500 index. 20 day is trying to be the little engine that may uh, support and try to keep the S&P uh, basically where it's at or push it a little bit higher right now. But to me, the more interesting index is the wildcard index. Uh, the IWM, which is an ETF that tracks the Russell 2000, if we just take a quick peek at that chart, uh, we have the ducks in the row. We have the 200-day uh, below the 50-day below the 20 day moving average, but we broke through an area that should have been support to the downside. It was resistance to the upside. I highlight that right here. Now we came flying through that and we're hanging down right around that 50 day moving average. But we're back inside that channel that was established all the way back here at the beginning of the year at, at, in early January of uh, 2021 is when we started building out this channel overall. So, wow, a lot going on on a holiday week, Kelly. Uh, what do you see going on with the markets going into the Thanksgiving weekend? Yeah, Brian. Well, I was going to say don't expect many fireworks, but you just pointed out like five of them. So <laughs> expect some fireworks, I guess. I don't know. Well, overall, you know, the market seems to be the market being the overall market. The S&P 500 seems to be pretty stable. The little engine that could, like Brian said, um, and there aren't a lot of scheduled catalysts this week. Volumes are low, earnings season is wrapping up, and economic data releases are mostly on hold as everybody buckles down for Turkey Day. But as this morning shows, we may not get a break from the headlines and you may not get a break from volatility in your portfolio. Uh, so let's talk about the headlines. Um, so the big headline today is the news around oil. It looks like the U.S. administration will release about 50 million barrels of crude oil to balance out oil prices at a seven year high, uh, considering supply has been so much lower than demand. Uh, it's a sizable intervention in the oil market and it could cause OPEC to cut its own oil own oil production, say that five times fast. Um, and it could start this whole war between, you know, the U.S. and a few countries and OPEC, not a literal war, but, you know, a price fight of sorts in oil, uh, which is never fun. And oil really needs to adjust to that. So that's the main storyline today. We're still trying to figure out what it means. But right now, it looks like it could weigh on energy a little bit, which, by the way, is the best performing S&P 500 sector year to date. So have a casual 50%. So definitely watch your energy stocks if you're sitting in some. And we'll get to that a little bit later. I don't want to you know, ruin the allure of our stock play just yet. So hold on that for a moment. Um, the other big headline that we're digesting today is Fed Chair Powell's renomination for a second term. Honestly, that wasn't a very big surprise, but it was a question hanging out there for the markets. And now we have our answer. 
Uh, tech stocks didn't really like that news uh, because the market is back to fearing rate hikes. And remember, rate hikes are nothing to fear, but higher rates generally do favor more cyclical, uh, economically exposed stocks than growth stocks. Uh, and going back to what Brian pointed out in the small caps as well, uh, it seems like a lot of the smaller stocks that are getting hit are the younger, you know, more unprofitable companies. So, you know, there is a bit of a rotation or kind of a reckoning going on in the market right now. Uh, is it long lived, short lived? We're not really sure. But in any case, always be prepared for a pullback and expect these kind of rotations to go back and forth, especially in a strange environment that we're in right now. I mean, just zooming out for a second, it is pretty amazing to watch how resilient the market has been to all of these headlines. Um, you know, as Brian mentioned, the S&P is sitting around its 20 day moving average, you know, hovering around that. Uh, and, you know, it looks like the stock market in the stock market, there could be more risk for missing upside than catching the downside. Uh, but again, always be prepared for a pullback because pullbacks can happen even in healthy markets, strong markets with strong economies. I actually made a comment to somebody earlier that this has been the year of the barbell strategy, barbell strategy being opposite strategies employed in the same portfolio. Um, this year, it's more balancing high risk investments with low risk investments uh, to create like a gut check of sorts for yourselves, uh, a little bit of diversification. And, you know, that might be the name of the game this, this upcoming year, too, uh, as we see these rotations continue to happen. Uh, but again, try to capture that ups upside, but be prepared for the eventual downside. And as always, remember your personal preferences, risk tolerances and goals are what matter. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. But other than that, other than those few fireworks, Brian, there's not much going on. <laughs> Tell us what you're seeing in the VIX. All right. Well, I have my VIX watch list up, and we do see that the VIX right now is above the magic number. It's above that 20% level, so showing a little bit of angst in the marketplace overall. Um, that line was established uh, when we had the big downturn in the pandemic, and I'm kind of showing it here. I, I, uh, I got a chart zoomed in on the VIX, and we see that 20% level where we do, it just seems to be uh, the difference between high volatility and low volatility. We go out to the futures contracts, and we're looking into the December futures. That's above that 20% level. We also see the February and January futures all trading above that level too. So, but more importantly, it's just looking at the VIX to see that VIX index up 125 today, uh, trading at 2042. It, it, it just means that there, even though the S&P is near all time highs, uh, there are a lot of people that may be out buying some option premium to help protect their portfolios overall. That's usually why they call the VIX the fear index in general. And a lot of times when you have markets that are at all time highs, you very rarely see the VIX at also high levels relative to the, to the rest of the year, but we have that right now. So obviously everything that's going on, uh, the, the main news headline that you mentioned is oil, and that's what we're gonna talk a little bit about today. Um, that has driven a little bit of anxiety in the marketplace as a whole. So uh, what we're going to look at today is going to be the USL. And if we look at the USL, uh, we have a fairly similar graph to what has happened in the S&P 500 index. A little bit of a stronger move, uh, basically from September, middle of September, all the way up to October. Then we kind of peaked. We're back uh, down a little bit with a strong move in the USL today. Now, this is long-term oil versus the USO, which is a little bit more well-known ETF overall. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the nuances between the two. But one thing that is solid here, too, is that we got the 200-day, the 50-day, and the 20-day moving together. Uh, 20 days starting to bend a little bit, might be breaking down below the 50. Not too big of a concern overall, but we saw it back here when that happened. That's called a, a death cross, which I think is a little aggressive overall, but we did have a little bit more of a downturn in the oil when that happened. All right, so let's talk about oil and what's going on in the marketplace, Kelly. Yeah, Brian, let's talk about oil. And I'm actually going to point out that it seems like for the past few stock play episodes, we've either mentioned a death cross or a golden cross in a market. 
uh, which shows that there's just a lot of movement going on underneath the surface. So lots of interesting opportunities these days. Uh, keep your eyes out for them. We certainly are. But on that note, let's talk about oil. Uh, like I said, it's the big conversation today with the U.S. announcing it will release some oil reserves to maybe ease the you know rising oil prices that we're seeing. Uh, you know, honestly, this one makes me a little nervous. Uh, you know, the news is fairly you know fairly new, and we're all trying to process it. Um, so I'll kind of give you the breakdown of what we're watching and you know why we think there could be an interesting momentum play here. So crude oil prices are near a seven-year high. So the obvious impact may be a drop in oil prices, because obviously, if you increase supply, uh, you might see prices lower um, as demand and supply balance out a little bit. Um, and it's already looking like demand and supply could balance out a little bit more absent this decision in the following months. So this decision, this uh, releasing of reserves, could accelerate that and possibly mark a peak in oil prices. But it's not so simple. And a lot of oil's next moves do depend on OPEC's reaction. Now, OPEC, of course, is the governing organization of oil producing nations. And there is a chance that OPEC retaliates by cutting oil production itself. And it sounds like the amount of re released reserves may not be significant enough to cause a dent in prices. And they could be quote unquote borrowed or meaning that they're released now, uh, but in, uh, with an expectation of a uh, gap in supply later. So it's really tough to know where supply and demand shake out, but chances are this could cause some kind of movement in crude. The next catalyst on the calendar that we're watching is December 2nd, when OPEC gathers to meet next. Um, and OPEC, chances are, will uh, likely weigh in on this decision at that time. Uh, it's hard to ignore it. We'll just put it that way. So today we're going to explore trade in USL, the United States 12-month oil fund LP. If you've heard of USO, uh, consider this its longer term cousin. It's a fund holding 12-month oil futures, and it could be an interesting vehicle to watch as the storyline plays out. It does support sport, support, sport, I cannot talk today. It does support lower fees than USO, and it could offer more opportunity and option pricing when we look at trades. So that's why we're looking at USL today uh, in, uh, instead of USO. But always you know, remember the quirks and the mechanics of each vehicle. Um, this is a fund that holds futures. So it depends on um, you know, pricing and futures. And that's not necessarily you know, what we're seeing in the overall market. Um, so as the fund buys and sells futures to track oil, we could see some mispricings here and there. So keep that in mind. Uh, it's something you have to consider for USO as well as US, USL, and that could mean some interesting things for the options as well. But Brian, you know what? Let's look at a trade. Uh, I want to hear what you have for us. But before I pass it back over to you, I want to remind all our viewers to drop your questions in the chat because Brian and I will be answering your questions live at the end of the show today. All right, Brian, show us what you got. All right. So, uh, Kelly went through a, a nice discussion as to why we are looking at the US cell. And the reason why I'm going to do this is that we're going to look at a short put spread today, which is implying that if we do get a little bit of a downturn because of what happened, I wouldn't mind buying some shares of the US cell. That's the concept. And so we're going to use a short put spread to do that. I don't want to just sell a short put saying that I'm going to take this risk because releasing oil reserves has not been done uh, very often at, at all. And there's not really, it's really hard. We don't have any history as to what might happen to the marketplace after the fact. Uh, Kelly also mentions that we get into December. We're going to have a, a very important OPEC meeting on the 2nd. So that's going to create some angst in the marketplace. We see the VIX. Uh, creeping up above that 20% level. So one way to position yourself out as almost a, a fear of missing out is if I were, were to trade something where I might hold it for a little bit longer term, I would rather hold the USL as opposed to the USO. The USO to me is more of a trading vehicle. It does have better option markets and it does have better volume overall as far as the actual ETF is concerned. Um, so what we're gonna look at is just a short put spread. And it, you wouldn't do this trade 
if you weren't willing to buy the USL a little bit lower than where it's currently at. So here's the trade. Uh, right now we have USL up today. It's up a, it doesn't take much, right? Because it's a $28 underlying. That's another reason why uh, USO is almost double that. So it's a little bit easier to buy hundred shares of it if you wanted to, if we're using that as our gauge. Um, it's up 77 cents trading at uh, up to, uh, 2.76% on the day. Uh, we have a December expiration and that's what we're gonna shoot for. It's gonna be after the OPEC date, December 17th, uh, that's 24 days away. With the market trading at 28.66, what we're gonna look to do is sell the 28 strike put, saying that if the market does come down, Below 28, they can take the stock and put it to us at 28. But then we got a lot of headlines in. So as opposed to just selling that put, trying to buy it, we're going to buy a little bit of protection. And why not? It's inexpensive, right? So we go down to the 26 level and we see that that put is trading. And I'm going to go right about at the midpoint, right around 22 cents or so. Um, in this USO, I want to trade at midpoints just because, like I mentioned, it's not as liquid as the US. O is overall. So I'm going to sell this one and buy that. And this will be the official paper trade for the week. Uh, very short, very sweet, very simple. And it all goes around with the fact that if I were going to buy one of these two ETFs, and I was going to hold it for a little bit longer term, not quite sure how long that would be. I'm an option trader. So to me, a long, uh, a long trade would be uh, four or five months overall. So if you, uh, we have a two point wide spread, that's going to be our maximum risk. The most we could lose on, or the most we could pay to close this would be two points. We're going to bring in a 50 cent net credit to our account. Well, 48 is where it's at right now. So let me put it in the right rail and make it official. And we're going to hope to fill somewhere around that 48 cent mark. Um, and what, if we do that, then that's the maximum that we can make. If the stock does come down below 28, a little bit lower than where it's at right now, and it's at that, that uh, range right around that December expiration, December 17th, we would be buying it at 28 minus that 48 cents or 27.52 would be where our cost basis would be on the 100 shares of stock that we'd be looking to buy. Now, if you're doing this just as a pure speculation, um, where I would really uh, be concerned and, and think about getting out is if it ran all the way down and came down to my, my protection, down to my 26 put level. Well, at that point in time, I would think about closing out the trade. And that's my general rule of thumb. When I'm doing like a two point wide spread on an inexpensive underlying, uh, if that valuation ever gets down to that 26 level, then you get all the juice on that option contract because that becomes an at the money option contract and it gives you a lot of protection. Then obviously as it goes deeper and deeper into money, there's not as much time premium, not as much benefit to owning that option contract. Hence meaning that you're going to get closer and closer to that maximum loss potential on that side. All right. So if you truly wanna buy the underlying stock, you wanna make sure that you have the cash in the account. You gotta be able to pay uh, $28 for 100 shares of stock, $2,800 if you're doing this on a cash secured basis overall. Now, uh, we can run down, we'll look at the profit and loss graph real quick. If you have any questions, please do put them in the chat box right now. Kelly and I will be answering them at the end of the show. So let me remove our official paper trade window. And as always, I have to emphasize, this is not meant to be a recommendation. We're just trying to learn here. Um, we're taking an approach where if this is the underlying stock, we always want to look into the playbook and say what strategy might apply. And this is just one way when you have something that's in the news, you're interested in purchasing that underlying, what might I do in the short term so that if it does go up, I still get paid something, but if it comes down, I can target a price. And the short put spread is a great way to look at it. A lot of people just think about cash secured puts. Um, in this situation, I think a short put spread is more interesting than a cash secured put because of so much news being centered around this ETF that we're looking at. So here's where the underlying stock is at right now. This is where our put is. This is where our obligation is. Uh, if the stock comes down to 28 to buy it from 28 on down, we have that risk. And then from 26 on down, we have no more risk on that trade. All right. 
So uh, we're going to get to the questions. We're going to drop in the chat box our link to the Rookies Course registration page, which is ally.com slash options with an S for rookies. And I hope to see you on November 30th. Uh, but with that said, let's uh, let's get to our questions right now. Do we have any out there, uh, Kelly? Any? Yeah, Brian. Okay, so looking at the chat box, I'm seeing some hellos. I'm seeing a good afternoon from William Craig. Good afternoon, William. Uh, Zishan Nadim. Uh, apologies if I mispronounced that, but hi, Zishan. Uh, Zishan asks, "Hi, Brian. Is short is a short put spread similar to a bull put spread?" Wow, that is a great question leading into the third edition of the rookies course, because that's when we're going to talk about strategies. Uh, but I'm going to highlight something. And uh, Eric, if you would show off the options playbook, uh, this is a short put spread. And it shows you right up above the short put spread. It says, AKA, AKA bull put spread. Uh, and that is the term. And I, and I think well, on the trading floor, short and long is used more often to go along with the spreads. But I think in general, the more basic term is to say that it's a bull put spread. And that just basically means here's the stock price at expiration. If the stock is above your strike, which means you want it to go up, if it stays above your strike B inside the options playbook, that means that that's where you can make your maximum. And it's highlighting that in the profit and the loss graph. So you are neutral to bullish if you do this trade overall, just on a, in a vacuum on a pure basis. Now, I would make the argument that we're a little bit bearish. We want the market to come on down and we want to be able to buy it. And that's where I like to use short put spreads on underlines like this in this specific um, uh, situation, if you will. All right. All right, so they're close to the same thing is what I heard. Interesting. All right, so, okay, Zishan also says, hi, Callie. Hey, <laughs> um, I'm not seeing many other questions. So I'm gonna jump the line actually, Brian, and I'm gonna okay. ask you a question of my own. All right, so with this trade, December expiration, let's say we creep into December you know, before expiration and suddenly something happens with the OPEC meeting, uh, maybe another headline comes out, and we get bullish on oil. How do we adjust this trade? Okay, so if you do get bullish, that's actually a great question. Thanks for bringing that up. Because we've got a little bit longer expiration. We're going out to that December uh, expiration with, I think it was the 24, well, 17th. We got 24 days. So that I got uh, mixed my metaphors there. So the December 17th expiration, which is 24 days away. So if the market does go up and you just want to jump in, you can always buy and close this spread and then just buy the underlying stock. And that's very feasible trade. And I've done that a lot. Now, as it goes up, you paid 40 cents for this. If I could buy and close it for 10 cents, um, I would be very happy with that. Close that position out, go ahead and go out and, and buy the 100 shares of stock and just get long the USL in, in, in that situation. Uh, but yeah, because it's a little bit longer going out 24 days, there's a, a higher probability that, that may happen. Uh, sometimes if we're looking at this, we might look at a two week um, that's a time frame that I, I kind of target uh, if I'm doing short put spreads where I want to buy the underlying stock. So we're here, we're just going on a little bit further in time. And it has a little bit to do with option premiums and the fact that it's a $28 stock to be, to be blunt. <laughs> good answer. Good answer. All right. So we have a really good question in the chat from Ramon AR. Uh, hi, Ramon. Uh, Ramon asks, hi. Well, he says hi. And he asks, how much credit is ideal for a credit spread? It looks like USL is giving relatively low amount of credit. All right. That, that's another great question. And I always look at about 20%. That's just the math. So if you're doing a, a two-point wide spread, you want to bring in about 50 cents. You're doing a five-point wide spread, you want to bring in about a dollar. Um, and that's always kind of been my line in the sand uh, as to if this is enough credit or not. Now, one of the big things about... This is real world stuff as opposed to theoretical stuff is if I sell a, a, a put spread, like in this instance for 50 cents, um, let's say I sold it for 20 cents. It's very hard to make that last nickel or dime on a lot of spreads like this, especially in something that's got some volatility like oil has recently. So I would much rather, if I was trying to make 20 cents on a trade, I would rather sell a 50 cent spread and buy it back at 30 cents, right? As opposed to sell a 20 cent spread 
and hope that it goes out worthless. Um, it, it just, that's real world stuff. Um, option pricing calculators, if you will, will break down when things get deep in and out of the money and nobody's going to just sell you something that's worthless for zero. They, they, they're going to make you have to pay for it to get out of that trade. So the last five or 10 cents is always tough on a spread to capture. So because of that, that's where I come up with that little rule. Doing a five point wide spread, I try to get a buck. Doing a, a two point wide spread, I want to get about 50 cents. And that's actually two and a half point wide is really where that, that comes out. So I don't mind this trade because we're going two points wide and we were able to pull in about 48 cents is where the market was at when we put it in the right rail. Another great question. Yeah, I've got a lot of good questions today. All right, we'll throw out a fun question, Brian. What's your favorite Thanksgiving side? Uh, so Thanksgiving side? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, green bean casserole that my mother Ooh. used to make back in the day. Uh, nobody, and, and, I, and, I, and I stretch there because a lot of people... Uh, when it went like, if especially little kids, I see all holding their nose right now, but I've always loved the green beans. And it's the only time of year that my mother actually makes a casserole out of green beans. Ooh, that's a good How about one. Back at you, back at you, Kelly. I know I can't ask tough questions and then not answer. Them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm a mashed potatoes gal. I just really like mashed potatoes. Sweet potato casserole comes in as a second. Green bean casserole is definitely definitely up there. Um, but I like all food. Like I, I just <laughs> appreciate food. So give me any side. I'll probably find the pros and cons in it. So yeah. That's awesome. So That's awesome. <laughs> all right. So we're seeing a lot of me too's, me too's. Uh, drop your favorite side in the chat if you'd like. And as we're thinking about Thanksgiving, uh, you know, Brian, are we having an OT episode this Friday? We will not be. Uh, we will not have the stock play of the day overtime. So we'll be back this next Monday. So you want to click subscribe. You want to ring the bell and you'll get all the notifications. Not only will you get the notifications for the stock play of the day overtime, we will, should also send you a reminder when we are going to be having the, stock, uh, the rookies for options course. But if you want to get all the reminders, please go to ally.com slash options for rookies and put your email address in and everything. And we'll remind you for each and every event uh, officially via the Ally email service. Thanks for coming, everyone. And happy Thanksgiving.